So have you guys seen the one plus five? I have seen a lot of the tech YouTubers make uh, videos about the one plus five. Yeah, there were so many. Mm -hmm. Vince, have you seen uh, it? I haven't seen it, but I've heard that it's it's a copycat of the iPhone Seven Plus. Yeah, it's I mean, look bad. wise, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at the back, well, it's got the, the dual, dual camera, camera pop, even like even yeah, the ahead. flash is in the same spot too. Yeah, it's... like if the the antenna lines, the dual camera, just the the curved, very curved edge of the screen. I but, mean, it, it's like the One Plus, or uh, sorry, uh, the HTC One, when they had a version of the phone that looked a lot like the iPhone 6S. It's the same thing. <laughs> oh, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, with the antenna lines. It's just like, why do we need to have the antenna lines in the same spot? Why do we need to have antenna lines? A lot of phones don't have them. <laughs> I mean, I understand that, like, yes, they are needed, but, like, a lot of phones have similar build qualities, and they're not there. So mm -hmm. that is true. Yeah, it is. I mean, I if you can look at the image, it's just it, it's somebody removed. I tweeted this out earlier. Somebody removed the logos, and pretty much one to one, it looked the exact same, except for that like elongated side button on the left side. But it's mm -hmm. it's it's like it's a copycat, and I feel like I feel like when Apple copies it, everybody's like, oh yeah, Apple says they never copy, and then like the iPhone gets called out. But like OnePlus, people are like, yeah, it's a copy, but like, oh yeah, like Android, yeah, it's great. Well, that's because mm -hmm. OnePlus is a new company. Apple is supposed to design and uh, innovate new things, and OnePlus is relatively new in a small brand. Yeah. So there's different expectations for each company, yeah. I think. I guess. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame them for doing it. I mean, if they want to do the well, dual camera thing, I mean, but the, the antenna lines, like, Come on. I mean, like, hey, if you're going to copy somebody, you might as well copy the best. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> just, just, just confirm it. Vince thinks Apple is the best. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They are. Anyway, the other specs for the OnePlus 5, they're, I, I don't know, it's it's pretty fast. Did you guys also see that controversy that OnePlus was like cheating on the review units to make it faster? Oh, no. was one of those things happening? Yeah, it was really fascinating. Um... I can't remember which site like broke the story, but apparently OnePlus sent out review units that either trick the phone to make it look faster when you ran a speed test, or it just throttled the processor to like run much higher than it normally would, or that you could ever get out of day to day performance. I mean, throttling isn't the right word, but yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you sit down, <laughs> like boost performance. Yeah, they would they would boost performance, and it was really interesting because. Like I don't know, that's that's kind of shady on OnePlus's part to make the phone oh, yeah. fast because like everybody's gonna watch the reviews that come out on day one, and it's oh, kind of yeah, deceiving. Yeah. I mean, imagine imagine the backfire if Apple did something like that and they made the iPhone eight like faster on the review. You, I mean, people would lose their minds. No, there was the whole thing. I mean, it's not the same situation, but with like Chipgate with the Samsung chip and the other manufacturers' chips. Yeah, how like one was uh make doing getting higher scores but they said in day-to-day -day performance that you wouldn't notice it but you would never notice it yeah. yeah i remember that i unfortunately did not get one of the faster chips <laughs> in my well, those success. are mainly those are mainly international uh, less than like the u.s versions true yeah but anyway that's a one plus five are either of you guys gonna pick it up no i'm not planning on it if Apple uh, puts iMessages on Android, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is going to be your go-to response for every Android Basically, phone for history. I, basically, I was looking that's, at it. that is the point where I am at right now. If if iMessages goes to Android, I am there. I am there instantly because, like, I, don't get me wrong. I, I don't have anything against my iPhone. I like my iPhone, but, like, you know, it's just I like mixing things up. So, like... I mean, yeah, I might go back after I had an Android phone, but I'd love to give an Android phone a shot for a couple of years. Yeah, I don't know. I looked at it; it it seems cool, but then there's also like it's not waterproof, and it's also I mean, One Plus they started out as the flagship killer because it was a really good phone, yes, comparable specs yes. for a cheap price, and now it's a hundred dollars cheaper than a play. I mean, it, it's kind of like it's 
it's killing itself as a flagship because it's not a flagship kill. Like it's a, it's an expensive phone. It is a flagship. It's a flagship now. now. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting how a company that was formed off of a cheap, really good phone is now like an expensive, really good phone, just like everybody else. Well, that's always how it ends up being, right? I mean, I yeah, certainly. Business. Yeah, there's um, there's still the couple. Uh, there's still a couple, you know, phones that stay like smaller, like that, like uh, Alcatel. Uh, no, mm-hmm. uh, Mo- is that um, Motorola does a really good job with their cheaper phones. Oh yeah, yeah. I really it sucks that uh, Motorola is only. Or the droid phones are only on Verizon still. Like, I because when Android first launched, I thought the the pairing of the droid phones and Android was the coolest thing ever. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, and I thought eventually that it would go to all carriers, but no, nope, it's still. Well, the Galaxy S Active is only on what AT and T. Yeah, not, that's right. That's yeah. not too uncommon, I guess. I mean, yes, but at least, like, they have, I mean, they're, they're even, it's the active, like, in terms of, like, a droid phone, it's, like, all of them are on Verizon. They don't even have any other options. They don't have any other options. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. I want to hey, give guys. a shout-out to uh, Max Mangum for the uh, the $2, what is that, a Super Chat? Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Simply said, Android is better than Apple, and I can agree with that. I can uh, disagree. I will refund your two dollars right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Max, uh, thank you for tuning in. Yeah, yeah we know who Max is, so we appreciate the donation. Thanks, dude. <laughs> One plus five hype continues. All right, getting to something Remember. that's more exciting: iOS 11 beta two. Out of the blue, oh, yeah, yeah. literally out of the blue, Wednesday afternoon, three p.m. I'm just chilling. I literally just happened. To, I was gonna eat because I waited a really long time pull out my phone and heating up something and then it, i literally see all the this tweet storm come and i'm like are you like really really on a right wednesday now. what are the chances you were you were waiting for this one you were like really upset that it wasn't there the day before right yeah because it's so weird that in in the past it's usually like 14 to 15 days I thought it was going to be 15. Tuesday comes, it still didn't happen. So I'm like, there's no way, there's no way that it's still going to come this week. They're just going to wait till next week. Like, that's fine, whatever, we can wait. And for whatever reason, they just decided at the arbitrary time of 3 p.m. Central Standard, or I think it was, it'd be 1 p.m. Pacific Standard, when they never release anything, they released iOS 11 Beta 2. And it was actually a massive update. Did you guys catch the change log? Yeah. I, I mean, I noticed all day you were tweeting stuff, and even into today, I think. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I'm actually working on another video filled with, like, 12 or 13 more changes that'll probably go live later tonight for everybody who's watching uh, right now. And just, like, there's just so much that happened. I cannot believe that that Apple included this much in just two, like 15, 16 days after right. iOS 11 beta one. That being said, like iOS 11 beta one was probably ready a few weeks before. And then they had been working on this update, but and they've been working on it and working on it. Mm-hmm. It's really good. I mean, one of the biggest features is that do not disturb while driving is enabled, which is really fascinating. Oh, when right. you get yeah. in your car and you start driving, if you have it enabled automatically or you hit the control center toggle, you just won't receive notifications. And like, favorite contacts like mom dad uh, anybody else that's in that list that text you will get an automatic canned response that says hey i'm driving right now i'll let you know where i'm going once i get there and have I think you tested it out like personally no i really want to make a video on it separately but i just got busy today and, and focused on other stuff mm-hmm. but it's really really cool like the concept is is neat and i think it'll help keep people safer on the roads it should yeah yeah um I definitely were, I remember watching it at the event and going like, yeah, that's definitely cool. I mean, obviously, I I don't, like, I still want to be able to, and I like that, and they showed this off kind of, but, like, I still want to be able to use the phone uh, in terms of because I use my music, and I use the iPhone interface to change the music. So, like, I still want that to be on the lock screen uh, when I'm driving because I, I click it to change the song um i think i think it should be that shouldn't affect like usability of the phone i think just texting okay okay i think that was their plan also do you know how it works with like if you're a passenger in the car 
Yeah. So if you're a passenger in a car, I think you have there's a notification that comes up, and then you 3D touch it or long press if it's not a 3D touch device, and then you tap on the passenger, and I believe it disables itself. So that's cool. That they they thought about. Okay. They thought about the passengers too. Yeah. Let's see what else was new. There was, gosh, I mean, the list just goes on. In landscape mode on Safari for regular size non-plus iPhones, you can see tabs now. The performance is a lot better. You can remove recent apps from the dock on iPad. Uh, Third-party integration for cloud services and the files application. That new... one, I, like, sorry, go ahead and finish off the no, pictures. No, that's a good time to that. talk about it because that's a big deal. Yeah. So what was I... it? I was not the files app allowing third party cloud services. I did not expect that. I thought they were going to go full on Apple and just have it work with uh, iCloud Drive. Um, to have an app that integrates those together uh, is actually like really convenient because like I really hate having these different cloud services and managing all of them, and to have them all in one place is actually like a really good idea. Do you yeah. guys know if that will that make its way to like Mac OS or is it already there? Uh, that's a good question. So do you, I think, do you know if it's there right now? I I think that, that like Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive yeah. have like third party apps that integrate with Finder, which is sort of the same thing. Yes, I do I do have that on my Mac. I have OneDrive integrated into the Finder, but like um It's a little bit different. Yeah, it's definitely obvious. I don't. What I you don't. Would expect from a third party, a third party implementation. Yeah, is mm -hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But it's really cool to see hopefully, it come to iOS 11. And hopefully, it should make its way to Mac OS if they're including it in iOS 11. I would hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting how they handle that because obviously the Files app on Mac OS is the Finder. So like. Mm. Well, uh, it would be interesting to see, I guess it would be called the same thing or be implemented in the Finder or something like that. But um, I think that the Files app is like the greatest uh, practical improvement to iOS, uh, iOS 11 because in terms of having, and especially for the iPad, which I, I think I might have spoke about in the last podcast, but like, and just in terms of having a professional device and being able to use it as a, con a computer replacement, something like that is extremely necessary. Yeah, just being able to search through files and find stuff on top of like having a keyboard and a yeah. mouse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, completely. I mean, it's a big, it's, yeah, like if you're trying to make your iPad your computer, and it's cool that they didn't just limit it to the iPad too. You can get the files app oh, yeah. pre-installed on iPhone as well, which is which is nice. I like that mm -hmm. Apple is like, let's give these features to everybody and not just this specific subset of users. They're, they're doing a good job. I, I mean, overall, iOS 11 I, is incredible. I, I love it so much. It's getting so well, much better. Something does bother me a lot about iOS 11. What is that? So, I mean, I really <laughs> am glad that they're, they're slowly updating apps to reflect the new UI change that was kind of introduced by the music app of the bold text UI. Obviously, we have that in the app store now in iOS 11 and in the iTunes store too, Sam. Is it also in the iTunes store? Have you checked? What is? The the newer bold like uh, text. like the No, new... that the iTunes store oh. has yet to be touched. The actual like design inside, just the icon. So I, I have a feeling that they're going to like change that in beta 3 or 4, but... Right now, it just still looks like mm -hmm. it has an iOS 7. Okay. It, it looks hopefully really out of place. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, hopefully they change that. And then you said they changed... Oh, yeah, the, the bar, the bottom bar in the clock app. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just take a look back at iOS 7 for a second, where they took an entire operating system and completely redid the whole UI for it. I don't know. I just feel like... I feel like if you are going to change the UI, although it is easier to do one app at a time, it's just kind of breaks the consistency of iOS. Like, well, I think you have to remember that th these are all betas, and this isn't the right. final version of iOS 11. And come iOS 11, they should have it. Um, I mean, I, I still don't think that they will update all the apps. I think that, like, obviously the weather app is probably not going to change. Like... 
It's just the even though it doesn't it it doesn't matter. It just is inconsistent. Like, yes, it is a beta, so hopefully they do more apps before the final release. But when they showed off iOS uh, seven on stage, everything was changed already. That is true. I noticed um when they did do the the keynote, the messages that feature that bold face. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I bet that's coming to the new to the iOS eleven. And yeah, I'm sure that even if it's not in these betas, it might be in the final version of iOS 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's there's Hopefully, time. Yeah. But I, mm-hmm. I see where Jake's coming from because, like, with iOS 7, like, there was, so, there was so much in iOS, like, the public beta version of iOS 7.0. So many bugs, so many glitches, inconsistencies everywhere. And I think that like Apple has time. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut them short before it's time for the iOS 11 public release. I mean, I would say when is good that? Fall 2017. Okay, so probably like right around the iPhone release too. It'll yeah, usually it's like the Wednesday before or the week before the iPhone comes out. Oh. So sometime probably middle of September, middle of October. But I mean, I just hope that they that they don't let things slip through the cracks because it it is annoying. It is annoying when you get a new version of iOS. And it's just inconsistent. Like it just doesn't look right. It's it's the yeah, small it stuff. Look. It's not a big deal, but it all adds up. It looks like something that um, a less a less polished consumer would push out, or not consumer, mm-hmm. a less polished like company would push out. Not Apple, who's supposed to be at the top of the the smartphone market. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I was a little bit so, too. If you guys haven't checked it out, great update. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully each update will so continue of, to contain that mu- that many new features. <clears throat> on top of the uh, the redesign, have you noticed anything different with like Control Center? Because I know you mentioned last week or two weeks ago that Control Center wasn't that good yet. Uh, have you noticed like any beta? Has the beta changed it at all? Uh, I mean, it's still. I think I'm getting more used to it. It still looks kind of just like thrown there, but I. Th- I think you just adjust to it. Like I think it looks the same as it did in beta one, and there's so much to tap on. But I feel like that's what the price to pay for customization. Like how if you're gonna let people put in fifty toggles, you, there's no good way to put in fifty toggles. There's yeah, no good way yeah. to do that. So I mean, I think I don't think it's Apple's fault. I mean, like yeah, I don't I don't think it's Apple's fault. I think that's the price we pay for customization. That's like my two week later perspective on it rather than like Apple needs to fix it themselves. I mean, I it does. Yeah. It, it's, it's not like it comes like that by default. P, you, people make it look like that and then mm-hmm. complain about it being like that. It's like, well, it, the intention was is that you put your favorites in there, not that you stack the entire thing. Stack with, everything in. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just something you get used to. You got to get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good. If you complain yeah. about it enough, they'll put a limit on it, and then you can complain <laughs> about that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's great. So iPhone. Yeah. And then one thing you d- you mentioned in the, uh, the iOS 11 before we get to the iPhone 8. Okay. Um, one of the big things that I didn't expect was the haptic feedback and like all the the noises and the chirps that you hear when you when you press on long press. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry but i think the comments on that video are actually just the funniest thing ever it's for everybody which ones for the viewers back home i can read a couple of select comments from my lovely lovely because you're out of town um I'm just so kidding. for some for some context the ios 11 beta 2 video i made that actually like i was really lucky to have like it did well i was i was really proud of the way it turned out i accidentally left back on <laughs> music louder than i should have when i was demonstrating these already copyrighted i when i I was demonstrating like these already um already quiet chirping noises that's the best way i can describe it so like somebody was like in quotations here's a chirp new chirp sound for the settings toggles has the loud ass background music so you can't hear it really lol thanks andrew next up <laughs> awkward thanks, fx thanks for the constructive criticism awkward fx says what a stupid video you told us to listen to the new sound <laughs> feedback but you continue to have your mu- to have music in your background it is my background you're right next up august <laughs> burn bomb says how many try- of these are there <laughs> there's so many <laughs> don't try to have people listen if you have music playing over it that is stupid clearly and these are all at the top these, these are all are- uploaded aren't they yeah, oh yeah, like the top one has forty four likes. 
<laughs> I've never seen a comment with 44 likes on your channel before. But nothing <laughs> comes up with yeah, the soft pretty, touch. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. The soft touch of Morgan DeFour. LOL, I'm listening close to hear the chirp sound, but all I hear is your background music. Maybe bring the background music down a little. When you want your views Maybe. to hear something soft? <laughs> Thanks, thank you, sir. I'll definitely remember Maybe. that for next time. <laughs> oh man it was great it was great and i've learned i mean hey it's it's a little it's a lesson like the video i yeah, make next yeah. with more chirping noises <laughs> i'll turn down the background i'm surprised no, no, no. just turn up the chirping noise just make it loud <laughs> I, I think isolate I, I did that, that thing in the video file and just turn that up bass boosted possible i was <laughs> bass about... boosted chirp sounds <laughs> Sam, can we talk about who made who made Toy Story? It's Disney. What? I know, I know, it was kind of Disney, but it's Pixar. Pixar. No, I literally uh, googled Pixar it makes before. It said it's a Disney, it's a Walt Disney film. Yeah, but it's Pixar, Pixar is owned by Studios. Disney. Yeah, but so like technically it is Pixar's yeah, name. Sam, before you know the movie Pixar. starts, before yeah. the movie starts, Pixar, the little lamp that jumps around, that is what plays, not the Disney logo. Both of it plays. Well, you get the Disney logo play. and the. On top of that, I because I, I googled this, Disney bought Pixar in like 2006, and there was only one Toy Story ma movie made after 2006. So. Wait, what? I don't think that's true. I'm pretty sure Disney owned Pixar for a super long I, time. I googled it. I thought. No, 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 wait, wait. I thought that they bought them before that. I pretty and, sure. And, I and then they made because they didn't make movies. They made like shorts. And then Disney... Nope. When did Disney buy Pixar? 2006. What the heck? Yeah. So when the original Toy Story came out, Pixar was its own company. I Not thought... Disney. Nope. Just, what? Just tell me I'm right. Just tell me I'm right. No, you're... Well, right. yeah, it says it right. I mean, it says it right here. Well, Disney. It was Pixar. Toy Did Story they have a Pixar. partnership with them? Though? Possibly. Let me, let me read you the first line. Because I, I remember, I remember oh, watching my. Wikipedia. Sam, <laughs> your sources. Let I me, mean, let me read you the first line. Toy Story is a 1995 American computer computer animated buddy comedy adventure film. Love that. Produced by Pixar Animation Studios, <laughs> Studios and released oh. and released by Walt Disney Pictures. Ah, uh, they published it. Pixar still made it though. No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, nope. I mean, in terms of who made it, Pixar is the ones who made it. J Disney just had a hand in, you know, it's like okay, it's like Toy Story. It's like I don't think of Disney when I think of Toy Story. I yeah, when, I mean, even though Disney owns Pixar, like Pixar, they make their movies. Yeah, they, Sam. They, so you're Disney, wrong in your video. Disney trusts them to make the movies. They you're don't wrong. have that much of a hand in it. Thanks, Sam. I, I plead the fifth. All right, let's get back on track. Uh, the iPhone eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the iPhone. <laughs> what's what's new with the iPhone eight over the last the last few weeks? Oh, hold on, no. Let me look up who makes the iPhone eight. Let's see. It was actually made by Steve Jobs, but published by Apple. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> iPhone eight. I mean, anyway, <laughs> iPhone eight. Touch ID. Is it going to be on the back or the front? Vince, go. Oof. Asked for the last three, four months, and I feel like we still don't have a final answer, and we won't have a final answer we until. Do. It's gonna be on the on the front. I guarantee it. Is it? I. That's what all the latest stuff is in. Well, do you guarantee it, or does Apple guarantee it? Mm. Who is guaranteeing that? What do you think, Jake? A good guess. I have a I have a bet of uh, thirty bucks down on this with somebody from my <laughs> school, so I really hope that it's on the front. Um, also, it's a it's one of those bets where I don't have to pay if it's not on the front. <laughs> He's so confident that it's not going to be on the front. Uh, the original bet was if it's on the iPhone nine, if it's on the front of the iPhone nine, uh, he has to pay me twenty bucks, and then if it's not, I have to pay him twenty bucks. I'm like, but I threw in right at the end. If it's also, but if it's on the iPhone eight, you owe me thirty bucks. So, I. Here's the thing. I really, I think that like since nobody's focusing on the iPhone seven, uh, uh, seven S, that, and I, I don't really know why or or if it's already been confirmed this, but I basically came up with the theory that the iPhone seven S is going to have the fingerprint sensor on the back, 
No, no that wouldn't make sense because you're not going bezel-less with the 7S. Are we sure about that? Then they have with the 7. Yes, but they could just do it this time, even uh, even though they don't usually do cosmetic changes. No, I really doubt it because I oh, there's yes, been like, rumors about it. I would highly doubt it that they changed the right. design of the iPhone 7s. It does. It's a little crazy, but like, like, and then they could still be testing too. Like, I I don't know. Like, there was a theory. There's also been talk about how the the main problem with why uh samsung couldn't do it on the s8 is that there's this thing that happens where the button basically where the touch sensor is and the display is is like uh like um lighter than the rest of the display so it like stands out so it still which looks obviously like you the button in there. yeah which obviously wouldn't like be good for like videos and stuff like that so I don't know. I mean, maybe, uh, when did they have to put this in? Like, don't they, wouldn't they have already had to put it in? Not into already, production. But they're like, right now is the time that they'd be putting it into production, correct? They, yeah, that would make sense. And well, I think usually it, it starts in July or August, actually. Within the next month. And so they've so got an We're getting really close right now. I and, think. And we've still had this back and forth. I think that it's going to be like the super for the eight, like the super thin bezels. I just don't know. My dream is that Apple somehow develops this like f full screen touch ID sensor where you just put your finger on the screen and then it you get logged in. No oh God, yeah. Touch. Like that would just be that's incredible. A future, that's the future right there. Yeah. No, I would not like. They imagine reaching your hand into your pocket and like you just accidentally unlock your phone. What well, your screen has to be on. Well, That's then you're gonna, the screen if you're doesn't gonna, turn on until you take it out of your pocket. Well, okay, then if you're gonna, then it's longer to actually sign in than if you just have your your touch ID at the bottom or on the back. Uh. -uh. Do you guys like how you sign into your phone right now? Yeah. By default, anyway. The, uh, I have the Galaxy S7. That's true. And That's it's true. all right. I like. I don't. I don't like it. And well, I, I think right now it's the best option. Like it's better than. It's better than that retina scanner that the Galaxy S8 has. Oh, oh, I'm saying in terms of, yeah, that's fine with the Galaxy S8. On the iPhone, like, and I know that you can go back to the regular mode, but, like, obviously you can't use the lock screen features that I never use. So, um, uh, where it just used to be you held your finger on the home button and then the lock. It's just the clicking the home button still just doesn't feel... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Natural, just, just natural. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we've just so, been conditioned so long to slide to unlock that to click to the unlock thing is just still like. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I have the um, I've I've used the Google Pixel, mm -hmm. and they have the, they have the fingerprint on the back, and it's super like they make it super convenient, and they have a couple of cool features in there. So one. You don't even have to unlock the screen or anything. You just put your finger there, and it'll unlock the phone for you. Oh. Which I really think that that's a cool – that's the way to do yeah. it. They also have where um, – since it's like where your finger naturally rests, if you slide down, it'll bring down like the notification shade. And if you slide your finger back up on the home screen – on the, the fingerprint scanner, it'll also slide it back up. Oh, wow. And I think that's like two really just unique features that they added that um, like really just give it a – give that button a whole new – a whole new feature set. Yeah, that's that's nice that it can do that to well, have more features to a button than just uh, do one thing. It's just something that's not more, th or it's something that's more than just a, a fingerprint scanner now. Yeah, that is neat. You know, Jake, for the uh, for iOS, you can set it to where you just rest your finger finger like you used to. Yeah, but... yeah, that's what I was saying, and I know I might go back to that, but also I just for some reason feel like if I need. To, to go to the notifications on the left because I'm just trying to find a good solution to I want to I want to like pull my phone out of the pocket and look at the time and yes it does turn the screen on for you now so that's pretty good it's just Could like you get a Galaxy S8 and have always on display <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> No comment. Deep breath, deep breath. It is a good phone, though. It's a good phone. Yeah. It's a great phone. 
for it for android it's a great phone i agree i think it's, i would say it's probably the best android phone out now i say it's the maybe until the pixel comes most out most powerful android phone no i would disagree because there's oh wait it's Samsung's not. skin is still pretty heavy, and yeah. Google's, Google's runs a bit faster than this. Yeah, no, I I still like I got it. Like like I said, I love how the Galaxy S8 looks physically, but the the OS like it just I, I just per, I would prefer the way that obviously the Pixel does it. It's just sheer Android. See, I've already said like if we could put iOS onto the Galaxy S8 then that would be a great phone. And I hope that's basically what Apple does in, in October or September. Mm -hmm. That would be. I mean, it would be I mean, incredible. Also, just with, like, I, I the concepts we've seen, just uh, they look too good to be true, but it's what I want. Um, just with, like, it's not with the curved edges on the side. It's just where it's just a full just the, the full screen and then a cutout for the microphone and uh, mm -hmm. the, the headphone. Yeah, sorry. The the speaker on the top and the camera, just to cut out for that, and then the rest of the things that display. That I find is, it interesting that since that um, since they officially unveiled the essential phone, this is kind of the direction that the iPhone eight's looking like it's going. Mm -hmm. But no one really depicted this until the essential phone came out, and I wonder if that's hopeful or if that's Apple kind of releasing some information to a few people to leak it or um i wait what were you saying is sorry you cut out about the essential phone being... oh. well when when the essential phone released it has that design up top where yeah it's that yeah little cut out right and i wonder if because we've only seen that design on the iphone 8 now mm -hmm. since that, that this phone leaked or that phone that was officially unveiled yes. so i wonder if um the iphone 8 is released or if the iphone 8 is rumored to be like that simply because the essential phone looks like that or if that's because that's Apple releasing some information to like their their sources to leak a little bit of. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That. Uh. That definitely could be a thing. I don't know. We will see. I like the cutout though. A lot of people were like, "That looks terrible," but I. I think it's cool. I mean, it's it's fine. Like, what's what else is up there? Your like your four G notific area, four G like status bar, and the uh, the notifications. I prefer yeah, I mean, to have it go well. all the way across and then just to have the screen below it, but that's just me. That's basically what we have now. Yeah, yeah but but like it's it's just super thin. Like even even with the, the picture that you have on screen here, if that went all the way across, that is definitely thin enough for me. It is thin enough, but I think the point of this is to get as close to bezel-less as possible. True. And if Apple sacrificed for having the little bar at the top, how much how much crap would they get for leaving that little space? Uh, probably the same amount of crap uh, the Moto 360 watch got for having the little <laughs> bar at the bottom. The flat tire. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. And then they said that they were going to do that for the next one, like have it full rounded, and then they didn't. <laughs> and then they stuck with the same design. Yeah, but it's just it's because you can't please everybody, and I'm sure to ninety percent of people it's not a big deal, but to yeah. those ten percent they make it a big deal. Yeah. 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 Volume cutout or not volume cutout, but speaker camera three. Oh yeah, speaking of cameras, there's been new rumors that like the iPhone eight's going to do all this three D sensing camera AR stuff, but I don't really know what like, that means. Like the Amazon I think that's phone. just um, you know how Pokemon you know how Pokemon Go is when you can yeah, I mean, look I know. through the camera and see what's in front of you. Yeah, I mean I know what AR is, but like you can do that on the current iPhone. But I feel like I've seen a, a bunch of rumors saying like the iPhone 8 is going to feature some 3D f facial recognition for an iris scanner or 3D sensing with the vertical camera design. I, I just I just don't know what that translates to. Like, if that's going to be a legit feature that people care about, or if it's just going to be one of those gimmicks that's like, oh, it's part of the phone, but nobody really cares. Right. I bet you it'll be the latter. Yeah. Well, remember the yeah, remember uh, the Amazon phone. Oh, the one God. like the three D gyroscope that would tilt. Yeah, it like three it. cameras on the back of it or something like that, and it like it, it like to like detect what. What was it? What was the point of that again? Like QR codes and barcodes, or yeah, some crazy stuff like that. 
It's like complete, and that's why Amazon doesn't make a phone anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, well, Amazon rest oh. in peace. <laughs> oh no, Amazon just bought Whole Foods, didn't they? Yeah, they're on the they're on the come up. Uh, uh, more like Whole Wallet. I don't shop there. Plenty of people do though, and you shop at Amazon. I do shop at Amazon almost daily. I would bet. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> All that YouTube money coming in, but oh yeah, dude. no. I mean, Amazon all, all is doing. I, Amazon is probably top like five up there with Google and Apple is like the best companies. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah for sure. I would say the top five companies that I have an interest in, or maybe top four. I'm not. I'm a communications major. Um, I already know. Apple, hold on, hold on, hold on. You no, can no, guess. let me let me tell them. Apple, Tesla, <laughs> Google, Amazon. Uh, one more. Netflix. I mean, no. that's mine. No. The, no, the no, fifth no. biggest that, tech company right now? I mean, oh, it, no, yeah, no. What that's is not it? On. I, I have no idea. It's what runs your computer. Oh, Windows. My, yeah, Microsoft. Microsoft. My, Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft is kind of farther down. They don't do as many big and interesting things. Although, I guess they do They're have the They're trying Xbox. to. I, well, you got the whole Surface line there. Yeah, the Surface Laptop, I mean, which is pretty. It's cool. really That's actually cool. interesting to look at that because essentially they are Apple now. I mean, in terms of having products that are great build quality, that are uh, high end, high end in build quality that you have to pay a premium for, but don't have that good of internal specs. It's basically the same thing at this point. I mean, I know that's that's not in terms of all the products, but in terms of the new Surface laptop, it's a MacBook. Like, not the MacBook Pro, but a MacBook. It's one of those. It's the same thing. It's really interesting to see them uh, do stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think true. they're they're just kind of following the trend now. If, I mean, I don't... If Apple's going to put everything that they have into their MacBook line, why should, why should Microsoft, you know? Right. And it's real. I thought it's kind of interesting. I, I, I like. I mean, and people don't get called out for copying anymore. That's just people have. For I, I mean, it, it still happens, but like people have come to realize that that doesn't matter. I mean, it's just how the industry works. Yes. So like, but nobody. I, I don't know. I just feel like I haven't been. I haven't really seen them compared to Apple as much as they deserve to be. I mean, in terms of the products they've been releasing. Well, I agree. Keep in mind, like Apple and Microsoft have entirely different consumer bases. Yeah, but they make they're making similar products now. I mean, obviously, in terms of micro, in terms of Windows, that's a whole different story. But yeah, in I mean, terms of their own advanced. products, they're releasing. Uh, it's a similar. I feel like they're they are actually very similar. But I think you look at Max and you can see like creative like video producers or photo editors oh yeah like college students and then you look at windows and microsoft and it's more of like like students in like middle school and like those like it's like kind of cheaper and like easier to mass produce and get to a lot more people yeah i'm just talking purely on on state of their hardware Mm. microsoft fifth and most interesting (laughs) company in the world (laughs) well i'm glad i got four out of those five right yeah, I was pretty proud of you. You know me pretty well. You're good <laughs> I knew it was Tesla. I, I could have bet $100,000 on that it was Tesla. One day, dude. Like, if I had bet on that, I would have lost money. That's how bad the bet would have been. <laughs> <laughs> also, one one other interesting point that I want to circle back to with the iPhone 8 is I've seen, I think, maybe one rumor, one stretch that AirPods will be included because you're paying like $1,000 for this phone. Oh. Do you think it will happen? No, I have absolutely no no hope that it'll happen. But I really would like that. If I get a free pair of yeah. AirPods. I didn't. I was confused at why people were thinking that. Now, now I understand because it's the premium phone. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, Vince. I now it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I, I think too. I think it's gonna happen. Really? Right. I really. Dollars. They already I, have trouble producing it for the people they have that want to buy it right now. Oh yeah, they still sold out of those essentially. No, yeah, no. Yeah, they, they are. Are, sold are they out. caught up with that? No. Oh yeah, not. no, that's not happening. Theory. Wait, no. what? 
theory, for, they're producing well, like AirPods. Months. They're producing AirPods and holding them for the Oh afternoon. my god, they've been holding them? What asshole? Theory. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They're mass producing AirPods, but not telling anybody so they can sell it with the iPhone 8. Exactly. I mean, that happens. Boom. It happens. <laughs> because yeah. if, I were, if I were an Apple company, if I were Apple, I would want to sell $150 AirPods now rather than bundle it with a phone for free in seven months. If the if the AirPods weren't one hundred, yeah, that makes sense. yeah, that doesn't. Yeah. Sam, come on, think about it for a second. No, 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 no. I'm not. I I firmly believe that they are gonna for once come through on something that they should do. No, they, won't. <laughs> they, they should do it, but they won't do that. I promise you. They'll right. give you another pair of cheap Lightning earbuds. I mean, if they figure out a way to drop the price on them, then maybe. But at the current price that they are and the quantity that they supposedly are not able to produce, I don't see it happening. Well, I mean, they'd just be throwing away $150 every single time. Yeah. Because you'd have to imagine that I would I would bet like at least 50% of consumers who buy the iPhone 8 are also willing to buy $150 AirPods. Yeah. I what if they offer true. like a – what if they offer a deal – like you buy an iPhone 8 and you get. I also don't see that happening. <laughs> I, well, they've done that with some stuff. Bundle like, the like, AirPods. I don't see Apple happen. bundling a ton of stuff. They don't do a lot of bundles, but AirPods no. included with iPhone 8. But then how would they even go about handling all of that? Like you then you'd have to ship two separate two separate packages with the AirPods and the. I, the I wasn't saying like to... shipping. I was saying like in store, but. Maybe, Maybe. I, I always but, order stuff online. I think about online stuff. That, that's true. That's true. Because I don't go in Apple stores. There's only one thing I would ever go into an Apple store for, and AirPods. that's to laugh at the people in the Apple store. No, that's <laughs> to laugh at the people in the Apple store. I love I like Apple just, store. Well, I just like going to the Apple store. I hate that you have to stuff. make. I hate that you have to make an appointment to get in. Well, to get something. To, you mean to, to to see somebody? Yeah. Yeah. To get what? What else am I going to go in an Apple store to browse? I mean, if they're not if they're not if they're not helping other, they help you. When when have you ever gone in an Apple store and not seen a line? Oh well, never. <laughs> exactly. It's just um, and like I'm sure they're doing the best that they can, and I'm not like mad at Apple for it or whatever. But it's just always I'm a mess. I'm sure they love the that. <laughs> I'm sure they love having lines out the door. Yeah. <laughs> I. Yeah, the Apple Store is a bit like, I don't know, I went to go buy the iPad Pro 10.5 there the other day, and I got in and out within 10 minutes. And I guess that's when it would be a good thing, is if you're buying something the day it releases and you need it that day. But like, if I need an iPad, I'm just going to go online and order it online. Like, that's really, just the type of person I am. I here's really what, like going in stores. Here's what the purpose of the Apple Store is for me, to walk in there and just look at stuff. I just Which like I, looking at the devices and like touching like the iPhones and like seeing the new stuff. I love doing and that. I, I just go to Best Buy. And yeah, I, but I it's just all not the same. Phones, all the ice <laughs> phones. I get a much wider variety <laughs> that's, of phones. That's true, but like there's just something about being in the Apple Store, you know? It's yeah, because they look beautiful. They look. They yeah, yeah, look exactly, really exactly. And the one in our mall just got like um, an uh, redone like um, like a year ago, and mm -hmm. it just looks amazing they have this giant screen in there and it's like it plays like really high resolution videos I well don't they it. have one don't they have a really nice one in chicago sam yes we're going have you never been to it naperville because that's a lot closer to me there's, a, there's to a, the... it's a nice one in naperville but we'll go to the one in chicago i've been on the one in michigan avenue it's really cool right, is we'll there a now. glass the glass box one's new york right yep, it's not Fifth chicago Avenue. Did you hear they're taking down that glass box? Yeah, I did hear about it, that. They're putting it back. Oh, they are? Yeah, it's just for construction. Oh, okay. At least that's what I saw. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I like iPhone stores. I guess I'm out. I'm out two to one on AirPods with the iPhone 8. But, you know, I have hope. I have hope. And uh, All right. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. I'll I'll see you in October. Speaking of which, that's probably when the iPhone 8 is going to release. Jake, are you going to get the iPhone 8? Uh, probably not. Probably not. What, what mean, phone do you have right now? I have a 6S. All right, um, sure. You're not that far it's just, it's just the fact that I haven't had to pay for my phone 
Uh, so far in the next one, I will have to pay for my phone. <laughs> so you're you're going to so make the success last as long as possible. I definitely am. Um, <laughs> and just, but I mean, I'm sure I, if the iPhone 8 is everything that we want it to be, it will gain my approval. Oh, Even yeah. with its fragmented apps and iOS 11, <laughs> hopefully we'll get fixed. <laughs> It'll definitely gain my approval. The 7 did not, and I knew it wouldn't, so I didn't really care that much. The 7 was um, it was a step in the direction that Apple wants to go, but it wasn't a, I don't think it was like a completely finished product. It was a, a building block to the next place that they want to go. Oh, yeah, and the rumor was is the reason they – that before this was months before the phone came out is that they knew sales weren't going to be good this uh this this year which i think they i don't actually know what the sales were but i think that they didn't end up being too bad on the iphone 7 but they did lose a step on um on samsung i think in this first quarter samsung's like lower tiered models that i think um after the the note 7 debacle Apple just like bunny hopped them. Oh and then yeah. This quarter, Samsung's lower tiered models and like the the foreign markets kind of caught up with Apple, and now Samsung's at the top. Okay. I yeah, honestly Samsung. love the iPhone Seven. I think it's a great phone. Right. And... Yeah, it is a great phone. I mean, it's like it's obviously not a bad phone. It's better than the success. Like I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying. It's not enough for I mean, a year. Yeah, as a year upgrade, that's not an S model. It yeah. should have been more, I think. The, the design wasn't entirely different. It wasn't really anything new aside from like the the built-in home button now. It's like it's like the comment when Apple makes it's like this is the best iPhone ever. It's like, well yeah, of course it is. But like that doesn't make me <laughs> want to buy it. Like I, at this I'd point. hope it is, yeah. Like yeah, like it, exactly. Like if it's not the best phone. I don't know what you're doing if it's not gonna be the best one. I mean <laughs> All right, but guys. I still love Apple. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honestly, like, I still, I love, I really enjoy making videos about, like, not Apple products, but I feel like everybody thinks that I'm just, like, a, like, I joke around a lot of, about it a lot, don't get me wrong. Right, but, like, exactly. I, yeah. I enjoy the Galaxy. Like, it's a great yeah. phone, and I, people, people, a lot of people disagree with my review, but I thought it was pretty fair. I uh, I like Android though. I mean, I like Windows. I like Android. I like all technology in general. I just I just like Apple yeah, better prefer, in a lot you of cases. Apple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember for... you were pretty impressed with Windows Ten. Mm-hmm. It's in definitely terms of better interface yeah. update, which it needed like really bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Alrighty, boys. Any other parting shots? Is that gonna wrap, wrap it up, it up? first? Oh. Uh, no. yeah, that's it. Oh, me. actually, if you guys are quiet enough, you can hear the chirping sound from the iOS 11. Oh, God. <laughs> can you play it into the microphone? <laughs> actually, let me, I have the phone right here. This is this is for all the, the chirp haters. Hashtag we need, chirp. We need a song. <laughs> Chirpgate 2017. Uh, let me find a toggle. I don't know why this is so hard. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Here we go. This I'm is the ready. moment you have been waiting for. I have never heard it before. All right, three. I okay, thought that two. was the tap. Jake's keyboard, I thought that was the tap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get a thousand, hundred million likes. Nope, can't hear anything. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the sound that it makes in <laughs> iOS 11. Please smash that like button down below. <laughs> okay, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it works. No, it's really, it's impossible to hear just because it's so, so quiet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one day it'll be a quiet room. room. You'll never hear it. Can you mm-hmm. disable that sound as well? Mm-hmm. Uh, probably, but I'm also not. I, I mean, if your phone's on silent mode, it won't make sound. Yeah. Wait, just really fast. It does. It does do the haptic feedback every time you tap the screen, or when the haptic feedback happens when you 3D touch or like toggle okay. switches on and off. Oh, so it's just the toggle switches thing. Okay. And like when you pull the refresh and do a lot of like interface driven stuff. Right. Okay. Of yeah. course, I think it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, we would appreciate a review. Or if you're listening on YouTube, we stream live. Or if you're listening on iTunes, we also stream live every week 
on YouTube. So you can follow me on Twitter, I update OS or at time to update for the latest news as far as when we're streaming on YouTube. We try to do once a week, but then, you know, sometimes life gets in the way or nothing happens, so we skip a week. Yep. All right, guys, it was good talking to you. Good talking to you guys. Yeah, good talking to you, you too. All right, see you guys. Bye. See ya.